Давай! Следующий год! Call sign 1CO1. Age 30 years old. Profession Special Forces Operator. I always look for some records for myself. One time an idea struck me and I ran 50 kilometers. I always set some kind of a bar for myself. The same goes for war. I chose a discipline for myself where I want to set a record, getting as close to the enemy as possible. So far it's 60 centimeters. He only managed to say guys, after which together with his comrade, he left this world. Special Forces operators are the elite of the Ukrainian military. Their specialization involves tackling the most challenging tasks on any front and behind enemy lines. Essentially, they are super professional war all-rounders who can do anything. Clearing positions in buildings, raids, ambushes, special reconnaissance, evacuation, providing medical assistance, preparation for defense. The presence of the special operations forces in a specific area can even affect other military units. For them, this is a sign that the adversary is likely to encounter problems. The infantry generally feels more confident. From the looks in their eyes and their reactions, we can see that they are happy to see us. Once we pass by our infantry and left them totally confused. Some aliens passed by, laid down, crawled towards the enemy and then returned by lunchtime. They were like, what just happened? A truly crucial factor for the success of Special Operations Forces operators is training and preparation. Each soldier must undergo the renowned Q course, a special program within the selection process. It lasts for seven months and includes both physical and psychological components. Just to prepare for the selection course, the Special Operations Forces website provides a complete guide. It involves five weeks of intense training, six times a week. Even after thorough prior preparation, only 10% of candidates successfully complete the Q course. 1CO1 also faced another challenge, a survival and captivity handling course. In its scenario, the unit falls into an ambush and has to cover 150 kilometers through hostile territory. At the first checkpoint, the instructors took almost all our belongings, giving us only a bag, paracord, saw, a flint and steel. And that was it. With these items, we continued to move. At each checkpoint, we had to undergo a fire test, where we had to start a fire and boil water in four to five minutes. If the fire test wasn't successful, they would take away some of our belongings. However, that wasn't the end. According to the course scenario, the next challenge was a new ambush. We were twisted, tumbled, loaded into car trunks in very uncomfortable positions, transported for a long time, subjected to sudden stops, thrown out, beaten, humiliated. Throughout all of this, bags were always placed in us, and we couldn't see a thing. We arrived at some camp where they started mocking us, making us walk in circles, electrocuting us. Then we stood there for approximately an entire day listening to disgusting Russian tunes. I wouldn't even call it music. Their anthem, everything that pressured our brains. Later, we had the opportunity to escape from there. We covered some distance again, and after that, the course concluded. All the trainees successfully completed the training. Besides rigorous training, the SOF operators are equipped with the best gear. For self-defense, I have a Glock 17 pistol and a classic M4 in this case. Its capabilities include effectively working at distances up to 400 meters with this sight. My gear consists of protective equipment, ammunition pouches, and various technical and optical tools. The armored vest that provides maximum Kevlar protection. Communication is carried out through the SCR or SPR radio stations. I also have TPT buttons as control devices for the radio station. Moving on to my protection. I use a helmet, it's quite lightweight, headphones for communication through the radio station, also a microphone. There is also the option to attach a night vision device, the GPNVG-18. Russians don't have anything similar. This device provides more than 90% field of view. Moreover, in synchronization with a laser pointer, it is an indispensable tool. As for the optical equipment, I use a PLRF rangefinder, which can be considered artillery grade. It is quite precise and has a very thin reflection beam. 
I also use compact binoculars, an eight-fold gift from the Russian Special Forces. Additionally, I utilize a thermal imaging camera that I can control remotely, providing me with a clear image up to one and a half kilometers. This allows us to anticipate the approach of the enemy. Before joining the Special Operations Forces, 1C01 served in another elite military unit, Marine Corps. It was there that he first encountered Russians when they occupied Ukrainian Crimea. One morning, while on duty at the checkpoint, Russian Tiger vehicles arrived at our unit wearing their new pixel camouflage. The Russians made numerous offers to him and other soldiers to switch sides and join their service. I'm Ukrainian. I took an oath. My family is in Ukraine. This is my country. It's everything to me. So there was no choice for me here. The unit of 1C01 was brought to mainland Ukraine. And after some time, he was transferred to the Special Operations Forces. Marines bring a unique drive to the dynamic operations. On the other hand, being a Special Operations Forces operator involves a different set of skills, both individual and collective. I always compare the operation of different units. In the infantry, it's 50% skill, 50% luck. For Special Operations Forces, it's more like 80% skill to 20% luck. Tasks are specific and can be very unexpected for the enemy. That's what I like. You're already planning to destroy the enemy, but they don't know it yet. This element of surprise plays a significant role, and you emerge as the victor. As a result of such rigorous training, the elites of the military had emerged. Special Forces operators carry out missions wherever they are needed. For example, 1C01 has fought in the Chernihiv, Kyiv, Sumy, Luhansk, Donetsk, and Zaporizhia regions. There were cases when 1C01 during the war encountered civilians as well. At the beginning of the full-scale war, we were extremely tired and practically didn't sleep for days. Civilians, under the risk of us all soon being surrounded, accommodated us and hid our equipment. Later, a column of Russian tanks arrived and cut off our retreat route. Some of the group managed to break free from this encirclement, but I remained with two other operators. Civilians informed us that one tank had fallen behind the others. We used this information, we reached the tank and destroyed it. After that, the civilians themselves transported us out of the area in the bed of a pickup truck. Later, we brought them food and water. They were there with their children. I still bow to them for helping us, even with the risks involved for themselves and their children. During these events, three operators managed to destroy a tank, although it was not a typical task. The tasks of SF operators are not simply go and destroy a tank, as nothing changes from a burned tank. We impact strategically. In Hollywood movies, there's a stereotype about Special Forces operatives who work deep in enemy territory for weeks, killing hundreds of people along the way. I can't speak about hundreds of people, but doing something that changes the situation on a strategic level? Absolutely. When asked about the toughest challenges, 1C01 responds, The tasks in which you couldn't participate, when your unit is doing it, but you can't, due to physical condition, injuries, or other reasons, for me, it's always very difficult to bear mentally. Before joining the service, 1C01 studied at the University of Choreography and Culture. However, now, he is an operator of the Special Operations Forces, one of the deadliest warriors in the world. We cannot pass this war onto our children. I understand this as a father. My son will soon become an adult, and I understand his character, and I know he will be ready for it, but I don't want him to participate in the war. 1C01 will do everything for victory to come as soon as possible, both on the front lines and in the rear of the enemies. To them, he has only this message. What can I say to the Russians? I have nothing to say. I will act.